So if you look around the boat right now, this is like snag city, man. You can lose a bunch of baits and get frustrated in a hurry. I wanted to show you real quick one of the techniques that helps me minimize snags, find fish quickly, and it also gives me a little bit of versatility. So I love in these situations to swim a worm. This one happens to be a Zoom Ultra Vibe Speed Worm and June Bug color. Got kind of a tannic water color today, so June Bug and that hard to beat. One of the reasons I like to fish this type of bait is number one, it allows me to cover a lot of water quickly. So, you know, just with a 3 16th or even an eighth ounce weight, I can chunk this thing out. It's rigged weedless and I can just wind it. Just like you'd wind a, like a little lightweight swim bait, you just wind. So most of the time I like to make a long cast and let it sink all the way to the bottom. Once it hits the bottom, I get some slack in my line. I just start barely reeling it. And as I'm coming across all these stumps and deadfalls, I'm feeling tick, tick, tick. And most of your bites are gonna be one of two sensations, I guess. First, instead of the tick, tick, there's gonna be a bump. I mean, it's it's almost, you have to, un, you have to experience it first to understand but you'll know there's no there's not going to be a question in your mind and also it's important to be a line watcher because the other type of bite you'll get is you'll be reeling it slow winding it and all of a sudden it just feels a little bit spongy or a little bit mushy maybe like you got a leaf on it and when that happens i'll just kind of keep a little bit of tension on it and keep reeling and as i'm reeling i'm letting my rod tip load up on that fish so say I got a bite now. If I got a bite right now, I would let I would give that fish a little bit of rod tip. I'd give it some rod tip, and once my rod tip barely starts to bend, I'm gonna sweep into the fish. It's not gonna be a slack line hook set because you're using light wire hooks, you don't wanna bend anything. But just an easy sweeping hook set, kind of like you would on a crankbait, or maybe even probably more specifically something like a swim bait. And I also mentioned versatility with, with these types of baits too. Now you can swim it. That's what I like to do when I'm searching for an active bite or an active pattern. Now, I'm gonna make a long cast, you know, when I first get out here and I'm looking for some sort of a pattern. Are the fish on individual stumps or are they on clusters of stumps? That kind of stuff's important. Now, once I get a few bites, even if I don't hook them, that kind of clues me in. I make note, okay, was it on a cluster like that? Was it on an individual stump like that? And once I get a couple bites and get keyed in on that, this worm is actually a really good option for flipping and pitching. Um, I've caught a lot of big fish throughout, you know, the country really, flipping this, you know, on boat docks and on stumps and just dragging it like you would a traditional Texas rig. As you drag this thing, even if you're not swimming it, just a slow drag sends that tail down there. It gets to going, you know, just thumping, just thump, 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 thump. And it's something a little bit different. You know, a lot of guys like to, fish uh, curly tail worms. A lot of guys like to fish straight tail worms. This is kind of that in between. Um, it's a little bit more rigid than a uh, traditional curly tail worm. That tail is at least. And it, dis it displaces a little bit more water than what a lot of these fish are used to. So you can kind of take advantage of their unfamiliarity with it. In the last couple years, this has kind of actually become a uh, major player for me. And honestly, I, it's more of a backup option when I've been catching fish on, you know, a swim jig or a chatterbait or something like that, especially if I'm fishing shoreline grass. If for whatever reason the water drops out of that grass or you just have a hard time getting bit, this is a really solid backup plan. You know, it's not as chunky as, you know, most traditional power fishing type baits these fish have a tendency to kind of jump on it a little bit easier and it doesn't take quite as much coaxing so my gear setup for this is is pretty simple um, if i'm using it if i'm using a tungsten weight with this you know again 3 16th or maybe quarter ounce you can even go down to eighth of an ounce if it really gets tough um, i like to use about a seven foot uh, you know uh, somewhere around a medium heavy rod um, you need enough backbone to be able, enough sensitivity in the tip, but enough backbone to where that rod tip transfers into, you know, some sort of powerful hook set. I'm using also 15 pound fluorocarbon. For this situation around all this gnarly stuff, I decided today to use 15 pound Seaguar Braze X. And I'm also using a pretty high speed reel. I'm using a 7-1-to-1 loose casting reel. 
And I, I choose the higher gear ratio because a lot of these fish, when they bite, they push that thing towards you. They push it towards you, and that's that bump I, I was telling you about. So when they push it towards you, a lot of times they're swimming at the boat five miles an hour. So you have to eat up that line, eat up any slack in your line, so you can execute that sweeping hook set we talked about. There's a bite, letting it load. There it is. Right near a cluster. Skeet them in. Ugh. Again, you know, you might not always catch a giant with this technique, but again, it's a piece of the puzzle. Now, that's two bites on the exact same type of cover and about three or four casts. So, guess what I'm gonna be targeting the rest of the day? You know, it's just, any little clue helps in bass fishing. Those speed worms are the ticket.